I'd like to call to order the This uh, meeting is 10. being recorded. Sorry, I'm going to continue with that. Yep. The June 10th, 2021 Hingham Historic Districts uh, Commission meeting. This meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. So um, just a few items before we get started. I know um, Carol is unable to join us tonight as is uh, Marianne. Um, Tracy will be joining us, but he's running a little bit late. Um, so in terms of the um, applications tonight, I know that uh, previously Ben and uh, Robert have recused themselves from uh, three home meadows. Um, and I don't recall that there are any other conflicts with either of the other two um, on the agenda tonight. Is that true? That's true for me. Everybody good? Okay. All right. So um, with that, for the first hearing, then uh, there would be uh, four voting members um, tonight on this one, given that we are down a few people and we have some recusal. So um, those would be Hans, Catherine, Justin, and myself. Um, so with that, um, why don't we get going and uh, let's get started with three home meadows. So um, thanks for having us out there again for uh, the site visit to um, see the story polls. I think that was helpful uh, context for us. Um, so I, I'm not sure if there's anything new um, you want to share with us regarding um, the application. There actually are, I can have Doug share materials um, which we thought might uh, address some of the questions or comments that came up on our viewing on Saturday. No design changes per se, but just some clarity and some drawings that we could put into the file for record um, rather than just taking our, our good word for it. Um, is it okay if we could uh, allow Doug to share our screen? All right. Yep, Tracy will take care of that. Great. Sorry, just one moment. Oh. I think, Doug, are you able to take it? Not yet, no. Okay. While we're waiting, I do want to thank you all for coming out again. Uh, I appreciate your time doing the two viewings uh, of the property and uh, considering the application overall. Thank you. Uh, of course. That. Um, okay. Let me Doug, just, are you, sorry oh, about that. Okay. Never mind. go right ahead. I was just filling time. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of the members feel they need any kind of refresher or background on this property or, um, any sort of, should I walk you through it again? Or that would you rather just kind of have us move right into some of the areas that we, we wanted to clarify for you? I, I think you might as well go um, jump right into it. I think okay. we're, we're all familiar with um, I want to be the sensitive every time, absolutely. Yep. Um, so this is the, uh, obviously the cover sheet you have seen before and what we'll do, yeah. And what I wanted to make sure was clear, we actually did provide these in the earlier uh, submittal as well, but um, just to highlight, the contours in green do illustrate how the grading will be managed on the uh, home meadow side of the property, as well as a few contours to the rear and how we're <clears throat> adjusting the lot to the backside where there's an existing retaining wall there today. Um, again, the, the goal here is to keep the ridge line where it is relative to the existing grade and this particular drawing really illustrates more specifically the um, how we'll draw the contours from sort of the east side around to the south side of the property, giving it more of a, a proper front lawn and, and gently rolling that down from 
elevation 23 down to about 18 uh, to the to the road. Um, the other element you may notice in this drawing, and we'll, we'll highlight this again as we proceed, but there's the existing curved uh, retaining wall, which is on the sort of the west side, yeah, as highlighted, and an obelisk. And after leaving the meeting and looking at that more closely, that wall will be impacted, certainly through the, the repositioning of the building. However, a good portion of it would still remain. And um, we'd like to submit as part of this application that basically we do expect through construction and overdig that it, it will be disturbed, but not necessarily all of it, maybe not even as far out as the obelisk uh, or granite post, that we would, we would reconstruct that and really restore what would result in about 75 to 80% of that, that retaining wall would remain in its current position and um, in its current uh, aesthetic or look. Um, and uh, we also, as we mentioned on site, we would be recycling a lot of the granite around that uh, foundation as part of the small retaining walls and such for the walkways and the drive to accommodate the drive there. Um, if we continue, there we go. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll just I'll just quickly. So <clears throat> we are showing we, uh, the driveway would be a removal of the asphalt, and we'd like to use a pervious um, like a Belgian block. Uh, it'll have a drain because that will pitch down off home meadows some and a uh, combination of using a pervious material and then a, a small trench drain at the tail end will help manage the water. Again, you can see the relationship of that wall back to the new structure. Um, continuing on, Doug, yep, there exactly. Roof plan, and then we'll get to elevations. Elevations, we tried to do a little bit more shade and shadow rendering to the uh, primary facade, this southeast elevation at the bottom of the page. Um, to highlight again that the um, roof material will be a black asphalt architectural shingle. The shingled surfaces will be a gray stained, uh, pre-stained uh, shingle. Um, sashes to be black, uh, sidewall clapboard, I should say, to be white, white trim throughout. Front entry door would be black. Um, there is brick proposed veneer for the foundation of the main or original mass. Uh, that too would be a black as illustrated in the photos. And we tried to provide some photos of context and such. And then the new addition would be differentiated by a use of parging uh, on its foundation uh, in a gray, simple gray uh, trim. Uh, gas tanks and utilities uh, would be subgrade, uh, at least the gas condensers as required would be brought around the backside of the building so not visible from the road. And uh, the Southeast drawing also helps illustrate sort of the uh, the way the grass and that lawn would marry up with home meadows and then how that um, bit of driveway will slowly pit back down to those carriage house doors to the garage doors um, from that street and uh, we have included now the illustration of that retaining wall on the left side of that drawing as well um, as it exists today and how we hope to continue to incorporate it into the addition um, working our way around the building not much uh, change geographically. Um, this is consistent with previous submittals, and I think the next elevational drawings will be as well, other than we did add a little bit of shade and shadow again or uh, to the building just to see the variation in the massing um, and some color representation of the sashes and the doors. Um, this drawing is probably helpful in terms of seeing uh, that little bit of retaining wall to allow the driveway to be able to cut that parking area to cut down, accommodate a vehicle um, to gain the additional depth under the building without having to raise the building necessarily up out of the ground, which is what we're trying to avoid. Um, and then the using of that granite as the granite capstones, as well as framing the stairs that will lead up to the front door from the existing building now. Um, last, last page is just sections. I don't think we have to go through that. Um, hopefully some of those graphics are of, of um, are useful. Um, each time I visit the site, I kind of feel more strongly about our our approach and its orientation to the street and really trying to make this look like it was an extension of Main Street, less so of 1950s home meadows. 
um, and more of a relationship, say, to the history of the Serafini property, uh, which this was originally part of. So I'm um, happy to address any questions um, that you yeah, might I've have. I've got um, a couple to start. Um, I know we sort of reviewed what's on the screen here is um, what is different from those exhibits versus the ones that have been previously submitted. I know there's some additional photographs of the brick and the parge and the wall, but is there anything different about the drawings of the building themselves? No, Mike, there, there really isn't. Uh, architecturally, there's no, no change whatsoever between the original submittal to this. What um, I think to address, I think Hans was had expressed some challenges in trying to really read the drawings on site and get a sense of the building in terms of <clears throat> the presence of that addition on Home Meadows. And we thought it might be best to provide a little bit of shade and shadow and some color variation on the drawings. So it's really just graphic enhancement and some additional graphics to now include the retaining wall and better explain how we might use some of the granite in the, uh, the landscape elements. But architecturally, there are no changes whatsoever um, between the two. Um, and the other question I had is <clears throat> the retaining wall on the sort of the the backside, I'll call it, of the property there, that concrete retaining wall, when the house turns, um, granted that elevation we can't see from the public way, but how it meets the retaining wall in the retaining wall we can see from the public way. What are your plans to address that and how does that actually work? I see the grades, but that's a pretty tall wall over there. Yeah, I, <clears throat> but I think, I. What we were hoping to do is actually, it's a it's kind of an odd concrete wall. I don't know the history necessarily of that. I was told that that one time followed a property line um, and it very abruptly marries up with the existing building now and results in sort of a concrete apron to the back of the building. So our thought is it's through the, the manipulation of the contours, we'll be able to remove a good portion of that wall um, and, and properly terminate it well in advance of the, um, the structure itself so that we can more comfortably wrap the grades around the back side of the building in a more typical fashion, I guess. Then it, it, so where contour line 26 intersects that wall, does the wall just stop there or how does that? Pretty much it would terminate at that point and then can, that way we can bring the grade 26 comfortably back around the back side of the building. Then it will march, continue to march uphill um, as the contours continue from 26 on up. So the, in effect, that wall will be demolished. Yeah, it's it's really just a, it's a concrete poured wall. Um, oh, yeah, they're, 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 I didn't, as looking at it, would not imagine a lot of love lost up over that wall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'd like to be able to remove that um, uh, as much as we can without getting into a lot of site uh, reconfiguring. Um, we think that's feasible. And then if I can jump in, everyone, it's Jeff Tarcio. We'll actually uh, be going in for site plan review with the planning board as part of the overall um, site grading at some point in the future. Um, so all, all of that will be included in that um, in that filing with more specificity. Okay. All right. So um, those, are, those are my more, question. Sorry, one Jessica. One question. Uh, uh, I don't think I can recall, and I don't have any special concerns, but I don't think I've ever seen black painted brick in Hingham. Uh, I, it, I, I think I've seen it in Boston, and I'm sure it's uh, can you tell me, just educating me a little bit about black brick and where it's seen and not seen? All right, I'll be honest. We see it all over Nantucket. I believe <laughs> so it. I think I was trying to recall. I think it's in Nantucket. Detail, I think it's most. Um, and I, I sort of like it because it's a really, it's very elegant, sort of beautiful way of just sort of grounding the structure. And if there are other gla gla um, black elements on the building, the other thing I like about it is it neutralizes the brick. So if there is a brick veneer, rather than adding a color or a red, I like the neutral of the black, and I think it works well with landscape materials and using antique granite against that can be quite elegant. 
Um, so we were really drawing more from previous experience in other other projects and maybe other municipalities, to be quite frank. Um, I don't know that I could cite a, you know, off the cuff a precedent uh, within Hingham uh, that illustrates that, uh, Justin, but um, that's really that, where that was coming from. I'm certainly, we have some flexibility on that if that were a concern, um, but that was, that was a thought. We've seen them in black. Uh, I said dark green is another common um, approach, even dark grays, so usually muted colors. Um, to sort of create a uniform look of, of, about the foundation. And I guess, Andrea, is there, can you recall anything is, and, or whether guidelines have anything to say about a, a, a brick approach like that? No, um, we, I, I think this is a new, um, this is a new territory for us. We have not had any proposals that I recall that include, um, painted brick. We also thought it was an opportunity to sort of differentiate between the two masses so that their foundation detailing would be slightly different. One, one sort of representing the historic structure, the parging representing the, um, the newer, the new build, if you will. Um, <clears throat> any thoughts or questions or comments from other commission members? Hans? Uh, thanks, Mike. So, um, just a just a couple comments. I'm not sure if there's any anyone from the neighborhood that's um, or any butters that are on the call. But um, you know, we asked the applicant, we asked Mark uh, and Jeff to uh, <clears throat> you know put up some story polls here to you know give the um, the folks in the neighborhood and on Home Meadows Lane a chance to kind of look at what this is this is going to. Um, closely uh, approximate um, if it's built. And, um, you know, what you saw up there was, um, you know, kind of the ridge height. Uh, during the site visit, you know, Mark was able to, you know, give us a sense of what, you know, kind of the, the eave line might look like on this, on this new structure to the left of the house, um, which was helpful. So um, I just want the, uh, you know, the folks on, on home meadows to understand that this is, um, you know, this is going to be a, a pretty significant expansion to the structure. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, in terms of the massing, it's um, I, I would call it kind of a near doubling from um, you know from the home meadows lane. And I just uh, I hope everybody got a got a sense of what what it's going to look like and got um, you know a comfort level with it. Um, and and if they're on the on this. Uh, you know, on this uh, Zoom call that maybe they would, um, you know, offer some, uh, you know, questions or comments. So um, I hope that's helpful. Um, and Mark, I just, I, I know you're trying to make this fit in with uh, with Main Street, but, you know, in reality, this is, um, this is a, a big part of Home Meadows Lane um, where there's ranches and capes on this street. So you're trying to, um, you know, you're trying to fit this in with some ranches and some capes, but also trying to, you know, tip its hat to the carriage house that was already there. So you're 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 kind of you're walking a fine line here, and I understand what you're trying to do, but um, I'm also looking at this as, um, you know, how how do we make this fit in with some 1,500 square foot capes and ranches that are on this street, you know, without overpowering them, because I think this is going to be a, um, you know, this is going to be a substantial structure when it's uh, when and if it's built like this. So um, that's just some some things I just wanted to say up front. Um, I do think um, I, I do think this home uh, needs a little bit of a, uh, some attention. Uh, you know, we've got propane tanks out in front, which uh, you know we're going to be removed. Um, you know, siding, uh, updating, um, you know, restoring, bringing this house back. I think it's going to go a long way. So, you know, how I'm looking at this is all right. So we're going to you know, there's going to be some you know, considerable increases in the mass here of this, but, you know, the offset here is, uh, look, um, I think this house is going to be a, um, uh, you know, a net, net positive contributor to the neighborhood. Um, you know, um, there's some give and takes here, but I, I think that there's some improvements here that I think we're all recognizing, at least I am. Um, just some comments on the, um, on the exterior. The um, 
And I appreciate your comments on the height change. That's one thing that um, we want to make sure that this the ridge height of the original stays stays as it is. And I think you you mentioned that in your overview, Mark. Um, the reconstruction of the granite wall, I think, is um, is also very helpful, and the recycling of granite, I think, is great too. Um, that's that's good. Um, what I was I was um, you know my questions were kind of relating to some of the exterior materials here and the um, you know the uh, the block and the painted block a uh, black block on the bottom. Um, uh, I, I think given the neighborhood and, and, and given what's what's the building looks like now, um, maybe some more natural materials might be um, more appropriate. Um, maybe some granite, um, you know, picking up the granite off the wall um, might work well there and give you some um, differentiation between the uh, between the masses that could work. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about drawing your eye too too much to that that color um, that's close to the foundation. Um, the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, all the, uh, all the sashes here in this house are white. Um, you know, if, if we could, if we could keep that the same, I think that would be, that would be good instead of going all, all black uh, throughout the house. Uh, I think that would be, um, that would be helpful and we can, we can maintain as much of this building as we could. Um, you know, a, a black door, I think works, um, Maybe uh, maybe a natural color on the doors or just uh, white doors might be might work well with this also um, uh, against that granite. Um, maybe some type of uh, you know wood um, natural wood color you know could work also. Um, the windows you're proposing uh, would be are are you are you are you replacing all the windows throughout this house, Mark? Is that the intent? Not, not necessarily, Hans. We're actually trying to, um, I think the hope is to, we don't know if they're original, but we think we can work with them. The existing six over six, which are in the main mass now, would uh, remain. New windows are proposed as uh, a Green Mountain product, which means they're true divided to be consistent with the window sash type that, that's in the building today, not a clad product. Uh, okay. So it too would be a painted sash, true divided unit. Okay, true divided with um, with storms. Is that what you would? That's would, correct. Yes. Okay. Um, could could that be could that be a, a white window? They they could be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, just so um, I, I wasn't able to pick it off of the the drawings, Mark. Um, can you give give me the um, the width of the uh, of the garage there. I'm, I'm guessing it's about 26, 27 feet. Could you? It's it, the garage mass itself. That gabled mass is 22 feet wide. With both those doors, 22. That's correct. Yep. And those doors are how wide? And, I'm sorry, Hans. What? The doors are how wide? The garage doors. Garage doors themselves are nine, nine feet width and width. So nine feet. And the whole thing's 22. Correct. Okay. And then the width of the um, the length of the building going back towards the property is how long? Yeah. The depth of it, yeah. Depth, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, now. Twenty-six feet, Hans. How far? 26. 26. So 22 by 26 is the mass? That's correct. Okay. And then the breezeway is what? 10? Its width is 11. Is 11 feet. Okay. All right. Um, Mike, that's all I have for right now. Okay. Thanks, Hans. <clears throat> Other commission members? Catherine? A question, if I may, isn't a butter. Ask um, why the new extension is shingled while the uh, older part of the house is clappered. Well, why not I, have the same all around? Yeah, again, <clears throat> secondary masses and additions to the structure it, it is not uncommon from a New England vernacular to differentiate them with the different cladding. You'd spend the money on the main mass, the original structure, which would be the clapboard product, which would then be maintained in paint. 
you might go to a lesser expensive product or costly product on the secondary masses. And we have shingle on the building now. So we thought it, it, it's a fabric that's already existing there. I think it would really highlight the original main mass, um, allowing the secondary masses to sort of fade slightly in the background. It also, I think, reduces its impact on the street. It's a little bit more sensitive in terms of its approach by using uh, the shingled product on the other, the other pieces. We have shingled currently on the other walls uh, and the dormers on that structure today, obviously. So um, one of the things I was thinking about uh, is my, my experience with this house just is a you know prehistoric districts commission and always wondering well that's the setting of this house is really strange and really unique and you know i come to learn that it's the original carriage house for the you know the the larger blue home on main street and i guess i have thought and i think that that's that part of the story will be completely lost once the orientation of the door and the um, site has changed. The story that this was an outbuilding with the exposed first uh, basement level, which is very common in outbuildings, that story, that relationship to the main structure will be erased. So um, it's certainly there are some there's beautiful enhancements for this home. And, um, but I guess in my head, I'm, I, I think, you know, certainly um, the air conditioning unit and the, the, the propane tanks, those can be moved easily. But once this shifts and the front door is now on the, on the, on the roadside, it, the, the whole story is gone. So I have, I guess I have, I guess I'd just like to open that up to the, to the commission at large, just their thoughts about, you know, this having been an outbuilding with the exposed basement level. Um, and it does change kind of that, that scenario. Um, I just would like to hear what the other members say. Catherine, that's what I, that's exactly what I was thinking as well um you know i don't for me the the two biggest issues is losing that quote unquote front door um and losing that kind of perpendicular orientation to the other house um <clears throat> i do think it kind of you know i was trying to figure out when home meadows became a road or what it was before um whether it was like cattle path or or i don't know it was a um, it was a garden the whole thing was a garden yeah going up the hill and uh 1955 it made a roadway when the houses were built you know um but then <clears throat> on the same side there's a there's a wood fence there's huge hedges there you know kind of you know those those two structures are always going to be separated in some way and, and yeah fences can re be removed and um trees can be cut down um but i do think it changes kind of that public realm by moving that door around and and the that shift i don't know if the shifts required um to get it out of the setback to do the rest of the addition or not um <clears throat> But those are, you know, the the impact on the addition itself and the materials and the black brick. Those don't. I, I I can work through those. Yeah, I feel the same way, Tracy. And and I think that some of the quirk and some of the the quirk, the question, the history is kind of lost and. You know, I know that retaining wall on the back of the um, house is not a gorgeous thing, but I, it was probably a horse washing station or something like that. Um, that's my guess. Um, part of it, I don't know. So 
I'm kind of I'm I'm I'm, I'm in between on it. I just um, I think that the actual structure is very appropriate. I think the the size of the addition I find um, appropriate and in keeping with the um, certainly the lot can carry it and there's an enormous house in front of it. So, you know, this um, works with that and the black brick I find appropriate as well. I think it grounds the property very nicely. I, I One other thing I wanted to mention is I thought there were some nine over six windows, not just six over six. And then I see also, it looks like there's a fan that's being replaced with a fan window. That's another um, question I have. So thank you. I mean, <clears throat> I think the great mystery is we don't know what the carriage house really looked like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, if I may, um, Michael, if I could, it's Jeff Todd show, just to answer it. Tracy had a, a good question. Um, moving it back by 15 feet on that um, north, excuse me, the southeast corner does allow us to maintain the setback that's required under the zoning. Um, the addition doesn't require that. So, you know, currently it's a pre existing non conforming um, building. But what happens is by doing that, we're able to put it into conformity which of course setbacks, et cetera, have to do with safety and proper setback from travel ways. So um, we felt that that was something that would be um, you know, looked at uh, very favorably by the other boards in town. With respect to um, just the door on that side, we don't know necessarily what this place looked like, but we know that the door was placed there when the barn was converted in the 1950s for a um, Otis Elevator executive who came to Boston as, um, as Boston started to become, you know, a vertical city, uh, the elevators were all the rage. So Otis uh, had, you know, had people out in different cities. Um, in this instance, you know, the door could have gone in any place, but somebody chose at that time to place the door uh, on that east side of the building. So I don't think necessarily that, that um, that's a continuation of any story with respect to um, the original barn structure. So that's, that's something that, that I thought about as well. The wall in the back, if you look next to the Serafini's house, it does continue. There's some painting on it. Um, I don't think you can necessarily see it because it's behind the new um, garage. But it's a, you know, it's just a, it's a cast, um, you know, kind of brutalish 1950s, we assume, uh, wall that was put into place. So we'll be able to actually um, make a cut into that and then, you know, um, be able to come off of that. But the continuation of the wall, if you look at the plans when we did the property um, title search, you'll see that that was one of the historic um, property lines. So I don't think that it had any um, recognizable function for you know, whether it was livestock or whatnot, but um, the plans would suggest that at one point that was put up um, you know, neighbor to neighbor. I don't know how it related to gardens that Robert was talking about, but um, I think we can conclude that that didn't have a function. Okay. So the 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 door that's on your column at the east, the existing front door now, um, we don't have a record of of. You think it was moved when Otis took it over in the '60s or whenever it was? We don't have a record of maybe where the door was. I, I, in all likelihood, there were barn doors from what we could see from the description. So it's listed on the inventory as a barn uh, built 1850, you know, early industrial, um, you know, industrial revolution um, classification by the town. So this, um, everything that you see in there, I mean, this was a conversion of a, a functioning, um, you know, utilitarian barn to this residential structure. Um, you know, we know that, we know that from, um, Marion Brewer and her siblings, um, this, they grew up there and this is, um, this is with them as part of their parents, um, their parents' estate. Um, her mom uh, passed away a few years ago. Um, so she had a good recollection of the history, yep. uh, functions very well as, as a house. It's got nice high ceilings inside. Um, but they did what they could do. You know, it's apparent to stylize this. Um, you know, it's got overhanging eaves, et cetera. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting, um, you know, pastiche of, of, you know, something earlier um, that in the 1950s uh, came through. To your other question, we did look at um, Home Meadows. 
that came through in between 19, early 50s. So 1951. Um, and when that came in through, that was you know, one of the earlier uh, subdivision roads uh, in Hingham. And what that did was that, that I won't say sealed the fate, but um, once that went in and then the rest of the houses were developed uh, there kind of mid-century style, that locked in the relationship of this structure to that road not necessarily the house coming to the road, but the road coming to the house. And I think it's unfortunate that that occurred. And that resulted in, you know, the interesting you know, grade differentials in the relationship of the house to the street, which I would suggest just from a land planning perspective can be uncomfortable. Um, when we did look at this, uh, we weighed in. And one of the big questions was, can we pull it away from the street? And and give it a relationship to that street um, that was less awkward, less imposed on the structure. So that was that was some of the thinking there. Uh, the Serafini's house, which is beautiful, phenomenal, um, had a relationship with this as you know, this being the utilitarian um, you know, barn for that structure. But as was stated earlier, it's it's you know kind of long since uh, ceased to have that relationship um, with that structure. Our thinking is that this has this has the bones to stand on its own, and um, you know part of the thinking on the door relocation here. We keep the array on the east side so that there's not a door, but the balance of the fenestration, et cetera, you know, replicates the rhythm pattern of that side. But in this instance, it's a nice opportunity to be able to have that front door um, face the street. Hopefully, uh, you know, slightly reoriented again, 15 feet. And it's more like a pinwheel of that corner back um, allows allows this house kind of to have you know have a future relationship with the street, which is more comfortable. And again, um, we're you know here we are, how many years later, sixty something years later, able to kind of undo what I think was an unfortunate situation with the road coming in and again imposing itself with res you know with respect to um, to this home. So that's my perspective, and I just offer that for consideration. Actually, I'll, I'll jump in and I think amplify. Uh, we've we've talked a, a bit about its status as a carriage house, and for me, I I I think that that status as a carriage house has already been lost. I think if for me, if it hadn't been for me being told that it was a carriage house to the other structure, I, I would not have guessed. So it, it's, I, I think there might be other situations where that outbuilding clearly looks like an outbuilding, and I don't think we have that here. Uh, I, my fellow commission members may feel differently. I've heard some folks uh, say that the, that that does feel like a loss but I that's not my sense uh, and I find the proposal appropriate to the neighborhood I think the the lot can handle the additional uh, construction that's there and I think it is an an ad would be an asset to the neighborhood rather than a detriment to the neighborhood and uh, I, I think hearing some of my fellow commission members supportive of the of that the brick treatment, I that's pretty easy to get on board with. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. I you know I, I agree with your your assessment in point of view, and I think you know structures evolve over time. It certainly evolved from a barn a carriage house to a residence. Um, you know, it's still a residence, but, you know, this is sort of the next evolution um, of this property. And so I think it, um, I, th I think it, I think it, it makes sense. I've been, I've been looking across the street at the, at the house for the last 23 years that I've lived here. And I want to say that I do approve of the proposed changes. I think it will be a, a, an improvement. So I support I it. <laughs> Go ahead, Catherine. I just don't want to bleach out all the quirk of, you know, the oddities, you know, that that happen in a town when you have that evolution, but then kind of have to work with what you have. I 
um, there's a little story here. And what is that story? And the, the house has a story the way it is. And if you change the basement, um, you know, the exposure on that lower level is that story is kind of that question that like, what's that about is gone. I'm still all unresolved, but. Is there any, Catherine, do you have any ideas of maybe ways to try and preserve that? Uh, some, some way to give a nod to that history of that exposed basement? Yeah, I mean, I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I had a great idea, but it, I think it's, it's interesting to me. This form is not perfect, and that to me is really quirky and interesting and probably not great to live in, having to hook all the way to the front door, but certainly it puts questions in your head. It, the, there's no question about it. The changes are beautiful. They're gorgeous, but the quirk is gone. And then I wonder with every little loss of a quirk or a funny this or strange that, that that doesn't, you know, then, then we, you know, we, we're living in, you know, maybe Stepford or, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not just putting it out there. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I think there's been a lot of great discussion here tonight. I mean, I, I think we have what we have in front of us. Um, we visited the property a couple of times. Um, and so I'd like to suggest we sort of um, move this along in, in one way or another. Um, and so um, I, I would say if there's no more questions, I'd like to ask if um, somebody would be ready to make a motion. Did, did, why are there six over nine windows? Just, I thought we saw some, I'm sorry, nine over six windows in the front. I thought there were. I thought, I thought on the uh, second floor, perhaps, or no? I thought on the first floor in the front of the building, there were some nine over sixes. If you could go to the front. Uh, yeah, so we changed six over six in our proposal. Where was yeah. it? Photographs. So there are, to address Catherine's question, there are nine over six shown on the original uh, structure now as being highlighted. And, um, we maintain the same size opening, but we went to a six over six um, just because we thought that'd be consistent with what's on the second floor. Uh, again, if the board felt strongly about that, that's something we could certainly work with um, moving forward. I think the quirk of the nine over six is important to the. We kept the nine over sixes on the on the east elevation, uh, and and as we wrap around. No, we oh, I thought we did. I was just looking around. Yeah, oh, all right, I'm sorry. Put my glasses. Uh, but anyway, yes, I'll back up. If the board, if that's something you would like to say, you know, in terms of quirks, um, Catherine, I do feel there are a few weird quirks when you look at the building. That would, me as an architect, would make me, why are there hips? Well, that's from 1950, clearly. Why are there the flanking small windows where there may be where the former front door was? Well, that speaks to what was done in 1950 as well. All the fenestration remains consistent on that east elevation we were just looking at. So I do think there are gonna be a few elements from 1850, from 1950, and then we'll see what, you know, 2021 hopefully brings. So there is, I think there are elements of its history that are going to still remain um, in the evolution of this home. Um, I'd like to think, and I do like to make nods to different moments in history. I, I, I see your point, Catherine, um, but I do feel that there are, there are a few elements that still remain, will remain from both those periods um, with this proposal. So may I ask Mark, um, did you talk about the nine over sixes? Is that something that we can? If, if nine over six, we had, I, I we did change that to a, a traditional six over six, but if a nine over six is desired, it's the same size opening, but didn't change the size of that fenestration. We could continue to work with that if that was a desire of the board. I think it's one of those nice quirks to remain. Okay. Also, I don't think nine over six was 1950, so. It's odd that those were even in there. If you look, I don't know, did you recall, Catherine, when we walked through the interior and Marion showed us the watercolor of the building? 
I'm over the fire. I don't expect you to, yeah, have a photographic memory of that. But I mean, those those were illustrated two over two windows in that watercolor. We don't know what that watercolor is even from. That might have been fantasy of what we think. It's the only record we have of possibly what that carriage house looked like. Yeah, and it could have been a fantasy. There's a couple of oh. turrets that looked very. Oh, it looked very whimsical. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Talk about quirks. Yeah. So if we were to make a motion that involved the nine over, retaining the nine over six quirk, would that just be the window that you're gesturing to right now on A2.1? And then on the other face there, uh, no, those aren't nine over six. I think, I thought the whole first floor was nine over six. I think you're right, Catherine. Um, and I'd like to see those remain just because it's unusual. It's not perfect. And um, I think there are five in total, which we could continue to retain. Yeah, there are five existing. So we could retain the the in the front. Well, the, all the um, the front and the street facing would have. Well, are you are you? I'm not sure. Are you suggesting that we would keep the nine over six in the original main mass, or are you suggesting we go to nine over six everywhere? No, oh, no, just the main. Mass. I thought I yeah. heard the main mass. Right. On the first I think that makes floor. sense. Yeah. And actually, with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, I'd like to make a motion if you would be open to that. Great, go ahead. So I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for Three Home Meadows Lane. Uh, according to drawings dated 10 June, 2021, with uh, amendments to those drawings to sp specify that the original mass of the home, first floor windows, be a nine over six format, and and forgive me, I but I did uh, think that uh, Hans's uh, suggestion of of a white white windows a white window structure I uh, would uh, the applicants be open to the motion specifying white. Uh, a white painted windows uh, for the main mass of the house. I know we didn't talk about that before. I opened. yeah, we'd certainly be used for white sash, yeah. white sash. Yeah, white. Yes. So white, white or cream, just white or cream. You know what I'm. Yeah. Uh, white. So I, I'd like to have that be part of the motion and. Let's see, what other materials uh, have we got here? We have a, a black door specified. We have shingles on the new construction. We have asphalt roof. And I'm going to look, <laughs> forgive me for, let's see, trim is white, clabbered white. Thank you. Uh, shingles will be gray stain. Sash, we uh, are suggesting white, sash, white, or cream. Doors, black, and that foundation, black, and foundation, gray, parge, and roof, the black architectural asphalt. Are there any other? Elements of the, of the motion, Andrea. Um, yeah, the the um, Rick. Uh, I mean the the material for the driveway. Uh, material for the driveway was the uh, there, there we is. go Belgium, Belgium block. block. I I would also add the um, true divided light wood windows, um, Green Mountain. Yes, Green Mountain, True Divided Light, all wood. Six over six. And Indeed. nine over six on the on the first floor of the new structure of the old mass, and six over six for the balance. Yep. Hans? 
Justin and Mike, is is there any way we can get that black brick swapped out to a granite that would pick up off that wall or recycled material from that that wall that can be used in that in place of that black black painted brick? Um, I don't know if there's others on the commission who felt that way, I, but I, I, I thought I, I was, certainly did. I thought I was hearing some support for okay the proposed black. I think it looks sharp yeah. and I like the black windows. But. Mm -hmm. Not part of the motion. Is that so the motion I, I think I'm going to I'm going to leave the the black brick treatment in the, in the motion and white sash white or cream sash and and with I think that that's my motion. And one one other thing to add all exterior materials to be wood. Yes, please. Okay. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Um, Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. Hans, how do you vote? No. Uh, and that's an aye for me. Um, so the motion carries. Um, Three to one. Um, thanks for all your effort um, on this project. I look forward to seeing the progress. We thank Great. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank Take you. care. Well, thank good you. night. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Um, next hearing is 20 Fearing Road. Uh, apologies, we're running a little late um, tonight. Um, and actually, before we start, um the hearing i know um we've got um, four voting members here tonight hans catherine justin myself um and i'd like to appoint a fifth on this um, tracy were you part of uh the previous hearings on this this is we visited this last week right yep. yes um i was not that on the first one no you weren't on the first no. one um Ben, were you at the first one? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, can I appoint you the fifth voting member? Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, why don't we get started? I guess, uh, first off, thanks for having us out um, to the site. Uh, it was great to see uh, the context of the existing structure in um, uh, the context of the streetscape in the other properties. So um, is there anything new that you'd like to uh, walk through with us? Oh, you're muted, Sally. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think when we walked around the site um, last Saturday, I had passed out and I think I sent it to Andrea the left side elevation, just so you could all see what it would look like from the neighbor's point of view. Um, and again, we had two windows on that side. We talked about whether it be clabbered or shingles, which I think the um, Hansons were perfectly fine to have the whole barn shingles if they, you know, people feel that's better than the clabbered. Um, but we feel like the, the, the design of the barn, you know, complements the house much better than the existing garage that's there. And I think we feel too that, you know, the left um, facade, if you will, is kind of a, almost a, a fence to the neighbor's property. It kind of works if you look at the site plan. Um, and I don't know how to, to do it to show you, but um, I think I passed out where the two houses are together, but, but both houses, the, their garages are to the back left corner, the back rear corner. But the neighbor's um, house actually, um, they're not looking, at, the house isn't looking at the barn and their barn isn't looking at the barn. The Hanson's barn is almost in the middle of the property, which is kind of a nice thing because it, it creates almost a fence to theirs. And, it, oh, sorry. and also, um, you know, it kind of blocks the Hanson's um, backyard too. So, um, you know, it's, it's just a nice, um, fence, if you will. Um, we're going up, I think, three and a half feet is the eave. 
the the ridge or the, the pitch is 40 degrees, so it's not huge. Um, again, we have a three foot knee wall. I think that's pretty standard on a typical barn. Um, and you have the elevations in your packet. So um, again, Shall I we, think it's, um, yeah. Do you want me to um, sh share my plans? Uh, do you feel that's yeah, a- Yeah, All right, I've got the original plans. Would that be useful? And the original- Yeah, plans? those would be, yeah. I think you have the rendering, which I think really explains all of it. That, you know, we okay. have a- Last and door on the so, left. Yeah, Tracy, if you can help me to uh, let me share my screen, that would be fabulous. All right, come on. There it is. Okay, let's see. Where is Sally? Here we go. Um, so we'll move, let me just move on down here. Is this um, is this useful, Sally, or where would you like me to go? Well, I think that you know the that does show where the garage is going. I mean, it's in its existing location. It's just we're adding about eighteen inches to the rear, which will meet the, the rear yard setback, um, and then we're adding a little bit to the right side. Um, we know that we don't need the left side setback, but um, I don't know if we sent the site plan of the 13 or 14 houses in the neighborhood. Yes, yes. Almost I, let me see if I can get that up here. Um, hold on. But, you know, out of 13 properties, we sort of looked at that, you know, adjoin in a sort of circle around this property, only one of them meets the setbacks. Um, and a lot of them have been turned into two story. So there you can see, I think that really is helpful to see that the garage that is the Hansons is almost right in, you know, kind of blocks the, the neighbor's yard, which to me gives it almost more privacy. Um, yeah. You know, and the house isn't looking into the new barn. It's just kind of sitting on its own. So it does give almost a nice fence to the, to the neighbor's property and just kind of hides what, you know, gives some privacy to the Hansons too in their backyard. Um, so I think it's actually really nicely located to where it is. Um, again, you know, details like we talked about in the last hearing is that, you know, we would be matching all the historic details of the house, the pigeon ledges that, you know, built out gable, um, you know, shutters, um, two divided light windows, you know, six over six um, to match the house. Uh, and again, we could do clabbers or we can do shingles. Okay. Thank you, um, Sally. You know, I think looking at these drawings and being out on site, I think um, this is a nice solution um, to what you're trying to accomplish. And um, I think it's, it's a nice improvement over what's there. And I think it's appropriate for, um, for where it is in the neighborhood um, and I think it's a nice uh, solution. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, Jeff, Jeff, and did I share your view, Mr. Chairman? I thought I think the proposal is appropriate. We, uh, did want to have the site visit because of the the neighbors' concerns, but in, in looking at the site, it, uh, it I I think it's a very reasonable and appropriate proposal. And historically, uh, in in keeping, I would prefer the the shingles, uh, if, but that's the only detail I would uh, yeah. suggest. Is okay. Thanks, Justin. Um, other commission members, Catherine. I think the um, I think actually, clabbered for the front. It, this is reading to me a um, as like a carriage house versus like a barn. So I'm it's a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more formal, I guess. So I guess in the structure itself is reading a little bit more formal because the home is formal and they they met they marry very nicely together. So I I think um, I would prefer to see clabbered on the front and the and my shingle comment is loosely held. So I. Easily sway. Um, 
and then at least on the front, um, cause I don't, is there any shingle on the existing, on the existing home? Tucker, are you there? No, no, there's not. They're just on the side of the barn facing the Coopers, the neighbors, there is shingle. That's right. That side is shingled, yes. Actually, on the front side of, of the garage is shingle too, which is a painted shingle. So yeah, maybe it's clappers on the front and shingles on the side. We'd be that, I think that the structure is in proportion and very appropriate. Um, ben? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Sally, thank you for a, another complete set of plans. It's always helpful to have such detail. Um, Thank you. This this fits well within um, that particular setting. It's set back from the street, from the public way. Um, it is, as you said, it's tipping its hat to some of the existing architecture. It's certainly an improvement over the 1950 structure that's there now. And um, I'd have to say it's got some of the some flourishes on it, but that's very similar and in keeping with uh, some of the other outbuildings on that street, including the immediate neighbors. Um, so you have my full support. Mm -hmm. Any others? Uh, the, does the uh, space uh, in the driveway allow for turning around without having to back out into the street? Mm -hmm. Uh, Turning the car around. At that, if there would be, you, you may have to do a few point turns to do it, but um, I think the Lance, Sean Pappas, the landscape architect, is looking at that. So, because uh, the street does get busy, so to be able to turn around um, and go out facing is a much better way. So, yes. Okay. Um, Tracy, any thoughts? No, I don't have any concerns. Okay. Okay. Um, would somebody be ready to make a motion on 28 Ferry Road? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 28 Fearing Road um, to demolish an existing one story garage and build a new one and a half story barn with architectural detailing and materials to match the existing home built in 1868. Um, and with a small bump out on the right side, um, and a dormer, um, did we talk about the, um, the site and the height of the building? And I guess, that, is, are you changing the grade of this, of the, the soil at all that we need to know about? No, it's really pretty, pretty level what it is okay. now, you know, okay. the driveway. Um, so materials all to be wood, and I believe the windows were going to be. Did we discuss the windows at all? Yes, Sally. So they were going to be um, wood, correct? Single pane, true divided yeah. light. Yeah. Um, and the lighting as seen. Yes. Uh, the one light over the the doorway, and then on the right hand side, there's some sconces on either side of the doors, but. I'm not sure they'll be really visible from the street, but that little sort of barn light will be what lights up the, the barn door or garage door, if you will. Terrific. So did I hit everything? I think so. I think I did. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, Hans, how do you vote? Aye. Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, ben, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, and that's an aye for me as well. Uh, the motion carries. Um, thank you. Um, we look forward to seeing um, progress. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. night, everybody. Okay, um, and just before we start on uh, 54 Lincoln Street, I'd like to uh, appoint the fifth voting member um, on this hearing. Um, ben, were you present at the previous hearings? 
So I, I was not at the um, site visit, but I was in uh, the previous hearings. I mean, I'm I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the property. I drive by it, and I, I okay. know how it sits on the street. Okay. Uh, if you wouldn't mind being the fifth voting member. Sure. No problem. Okay, so uh, 54 Lincoln Street um, for the, the driveway and other landscape modifications. Um, thanks for coming back and thanks for providing uh, some additional information. Um, I know we've got, we got some of it the other day and I think we recently just got um, some 3D sketches um, from the street view. Yep. Um, if, if somebody, uh, well, why don't you walk us through um, the new information and then if you're able to share your screen um, to show us those new exhibits, that would be helpful. Sure. Um, actually, I think um, my clients, Jim and Amy, wanted to um, say a few words before we got, got into it. Okay, great. Hey, guys, my name is Jim Rogers. I'm here with my wife, Amy. We're uh, new residents to the town of Hingham. Hey, guys. Um, we appreciate you guys all being here tonight, listening to us. Um, our goal in hiring Jeff was to create a simple, uh, yet beautiful landscaping, landscaping improvement at our home that utilizes period materials to activate what we consider to be the forgotten front entry and sitting porch, while also providing safe access for family members and visitors uh, that attempt to navigate what I think you probably all realized was a tight site. Um, in doing so, we talked to a few of our neighbors. Um, as you may have heard from our last meeting, uh, Jennifer from 53 Lincoln uh, mentioned that she has a large window that overlooks the yard um, and mentioned she th thought it was pleasing and yet uh, provided safe access, which we think is key. Um, after the meeting, I talked to uh, my neighbor at, at 50 Lincoln Street. Um, that neighbor had uh, a couple of concerns um, with uh, the plan one being uh, the grade uh, of the project, and he wanted to make sure that the you know house still sat, sat neatly on a hill. Um, I assured our neighbor that the driveway, for example, would keep the same uh, grades it's at now, that there was only a slight flattening between uh, the urn and the house. Uh, his second concern was some of the, uh, the, the, the two car parking area that we established on the side of the house so that we would not park in front of the house. Uh, he was concerned at a couple of the cars that could be seen from his house. Uh, I let him know that there'd be a wall in front of those cars. And uh, as well, uh, Jeff Hodgson uh, from Wagner and Hodgson, our landscape architect who's on with our, us tonight, had also lowered the grades there to help uh, minimize the impact of, of those cars. Furthermore, I said if he still wasn't satisfied with uh, the plan as established, that he and I could walk the property and um, I would be happy to add some trees that would help to screen uh, between our properties. We had done um, what we thought was a, a, a good job trying to screen that, that couple of parking spaces from the street. That was our first goal. If, um, if it helps our neighbor, we'll add some trees uh, screening that as well. But as we said, we think uh, this plan creates a circular driveway made of period cobbles with landscaping surrounded it to make it enjoyable to look at. While we survey the yard from our front porch, um, the front door and the front porch was never really used or activated before. Uh, the plan, as I mentioned, creates parking on the side to keep cars away from the front of the house. When we're sitting on that porch, we don't want to look at cars either. So that's why we've created this um, these couple of parking spaces. You'll see from the evolution of the plan, our goal has always been to move cars away from the front of the house. Uh, it does activate the front porch and, and, and entry, and we really love the front entry of that house, and we think that was how the house was originally meant to be, was used, you know, utilizing the front door. Um, most importantly, as we said, it allows for safe access to enter and exit the driveway. Uh, and finally, you'll see from the perspectives that you can't see the circular drive from the screen. So, um, and by the way, we think when you take the bushes down, it's actually going to open up the front of the house even more so, and it is a pretty old farmhouse. And we're excited to uh, to actually open it up to uh, furthermore to the neighborhood. So with that said, I'm going to open open it up to Jeff to take take you through a quick evolution of the plans to show how we got to where we are today, and um, uh, look for your um, 
your satisfactory response. So with that said, uh, Jeff, do you want to um, take us through how we got to where we are today? Yeah, if I can uh, share my screen, that would be great. Tracy can make that happen. I believe it should be available for anyone to share their screen. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. It's not giving me, uh, hold on a second. Can you guys see my screen? No. No. Huh. Do you want me to try, Jeff? Um, it's, uh, it's funny, it's not giving me a preview of mine. Hold on. We have a share screen at the bottom, Jeff, that's green. You have yeah, I, I hit that. Um, it's not giving me a preview of what I have open though to share. Huh. I don't know why. Um, yeah, maybe, Andrea, if you're able. True. Sure. Okay, let me get that up and going. Yeah, I was at my office last time and I'm at home now, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but if you go to the um, kind of full presentation, that would be great. Okay, um, hold on. I have to get back to your... Do you want... I have the... Um... Yeah, I wanted to show kind of the evolution of the plan. Okay, all right, let me just get to that. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Andrea. Okay. I'm just waiting for it to open. Okay. And so let me just. All right. Great. Good work. Yep. So um, when Jim and Amy and I first started, um, looking at, at their house, um, we, we started with this scheme, which, um, extended kind of a brick, um, kind of a brick pavement out directly from the, the steps of the front porch. And then the cars would pull past that and park on a cobble apron. Um, and, you know, we were pretty close to submitting this one. And then we, met one more time and Jim said, you know, I really don't want to sit on my porch and look at my, you know, kids' cars or, you know, have the cars right out in front, which um, led us to develop the scheme we submitted uh, last time, the current scheme, which put the parking off to the side um, of the yard, but still allowed for um, a safe way for cars to turn around in front of the house. And um, if it's, you know, raining, drop somebody off right in front of the porch. Um, the previous scheme, if we had, if somebody had been parked there, we also realized there wasn't an easy way to turn around. So um, that kind of led us to, um, you know, if there were four cars out there for a dinner party or something, it, you know, it would be hard for cars to turn around. Um, and then when we started studying this from the street, we realized we could screen the cars that are parked along the, the side property line uh, with landscaping. 
and that due to the steep grade of the driveway and the fact that we were flattening the, the drop-off area right in front of the porch, um, you wouldn't really see the, the turnaround at all um, from the street. So we decided that this was a better, um, better way to proceed. And we also, I showed a little bit more of the back area behind the house so that you can see that if there are cars parked back there, uh, it makes it difficult to, to turn around. And as Jim mentioned, you know, they really want everyone to come to the front door of this house instead of coming around to the back and squeezing in and, and coming in through the, the rear mudroom. So um, the next page, I realize you guys don't review plant material, but I thought it, it really um, kind of helped explain what we were trying to do as far as um, landscaping the sides of the property and the slope in front of the turnaround and really um, that the plant material is meant to kind of frame the view of the house um, and kind of draw your eye you know to the front door we also um, spent a little time taking some pictures kind of precedent images um, of oh well, first of all this is the back area of the house on the right and the view from the street on the left. Um, but we also went around the neighborhood and looked at you know, how other people have, have dealt with this. Oh, sorry. This is the detail of the garden ornament. Come back to that. You want to, uh, where, do you, yeah, where do you want going. me to go? Move ahead. Uh, keep going to the, the images. Uh, there you go. Yep. So, you know, we, we wanted to see, you know, are there kind of examples of where people park in front and how is it kind of handled material wise? Was it, you know, off to the side or in front? So, you know, there's kind of the gamut of, uh, you know, different solutions. There is actually this one circular drive, which um, we thought was a little similar to what we were proposing and that we had a granite cobble out at the street and then a, a turnaround in front of the house. And this one, obviously you can see from the street, but um, Jim and Amy's, you won't be able to see the, the actual turnaround from, from down at, at Lincoln's Road. Uh, and then we just wanted to look at lampposts and, um, you know, the majority of the lampposts, as you probably well know, are wood and uh, appears that Walpole Woodworkers has quite a market here. Um, there are quite a, a few of their products uh, on display. Um, and then we did find, you know, a, a house, the neighbor house that has both a light at the street and up closer to the, um, to the house and similar to what we're, we're proposing. There are all sorts of light fixture cut sheets uh, as requested. Where do you want me to go with this? Um, go, back go back Yeah, the garden ornament, I um, previously we had submitted just a drawing, the drawing on the right, but I wanted to get um, actual pictures of both the um, planter top and then the um, monumental pedestal. Um, we're choosing not to include the brass uh, plaque in the middle. That's an option. So it's a, pr it's a fairly kind of simple palette of um, cast stone, uh, the planter bowl on top and the, um, uh, base below, and it sits, you know, it's about four feet to the top of the, of the bowl. And then right below this slide are just, uh, images of some of the materials we're proposing for the paving, um, some clay brick, um, out at the, uh, kind of central part of the porch. And then, uh, the turnaround and the border of the driveway is a reclaimed um, granite cobble. So if you go back to the plan. Um, no, I'm sorry, can I yeah. just ask, what is this? Uh, that's, will... just, that's just a zoom in of the um, clay brick. Of this? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's it's an actual um, particular blend. So the blend on the left is called Autumn Blend. The one on the right is called Rose Blend. So, okay, 
Thank you. Where do you want me to go? Uh, just to back to the plan. Um, sure. Addressing, yep, that one right there. Addressing the neighbor's concern, the, the parking off to the side, we have a stone wall along the property line. And so at the lower left uh, of that, right where the cursor right there, um, it's about three and a half feet. The, the paving is down about three and a half feet from the property line. So that will help uh, conceal the cars from the neighbor, uh, neighbor's house. So we're flattening that area out, um, pushing it down into the ground, which creates the grade change where the stone wall is. And Jeff, the driveway yeah. is currently constituted, kind of stays that way? Yeah, so the, the driveway all the way up to where it turns into, like right there, the grades all stay the same. We're actually leveling it off. We're dropping the grade a little bit in front of the porch, adding um, one more step to the porch um, for the sole purpose of not being able to see that from, uh, from the street. And then if you want to open the sketches, I can kind of. Sure. Uh, Hang on just a second. Yeah. There's also a overhead power line along the kind of northwestern property line, and Jim and Amy are um, willing to um, bury that uh, from the street to the to the house. Um, so, so this is the existing view. There are evergreen shrubs that um, go up um, quite a ways to conceal part of the front porch we would be um, taking those out to reveal more of the front porch and more of the windows. And then in the next scheme or next uh, sketch um, is what uh, it would look like. Uh, so you can see where you see more of the windows. Um, we're putting in perennials, hostas, um, things that won't get very tall. Um, but you can see the landscaping on both sides of the property lines, a new new shade tree, some new um, flowering trees. So the idea is really to focus your attention on the, the front of the house. And uh, any questions? Thanks for, um, right. the interesting, the flower, the uh, flower bowl on the wall is is the trademark of Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're we're not we're proposing it on the pedestal. So, um, before we get into too many comments from um, the commission, are there any abutters um, on the call that'd like to um, speak or comment on the application? Hi, Chairman. Uh, this is Kurt Morley. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I did have an opportunity to talk to Jim about his plans. Um, I think at this early stage of the process, I prefer just to kind of a listen only um, and just kind of see how everything progresses. Um, you know, we're excited to have uh, Jim and Amy as neighbors, and uh, you know, they're they're certainly um, fully invested in the project. And uh, I guess our, our our goal is probably similar to to Jim and Amy's in that. You know, obviously maintaining these these these, these beautiful homes and landscapes is is paramount. Uh, so I, at this point, it's a little too early for for my comments. I did have an opportunity to talk to Jim earlier, and uh, I, I look forward to hearing uh, what everyone has to say tonight. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. Morley. Um, okay, then um, I'd open it up to the commission members for um, any questions or comments. Uh, ben. So I, I um, although I didn't speak in the last meeting, I, I think I'm probably departing from many of my commission members. I, I say that this is the very definition of organic. And from the street, in terms of the changes, I see this as nothing but an improvement. I am, I am not of the opinion that plain is good. I think this actually draws the house out more. You can drive by on that street and you don't notice the house at all. And I think this will 
um, start to pull some of the features of the house out to the road. So um, my only questions were on the were on the planter itself and the materials. I think it's become more evident in this meeting what the materials will will, will be for the planter. And then my other question would be the lamp posts. I do have some concerns just because you're you're going with a copper, um, and that is unusual, um, but certainly not out of the question. So I'm I'm just wondering if Jeff, you could touch on those items. Sure. Yeah. The um, the copper. You know we. Um, picked it because it's it's a long-lasting material. It's appropriate near the ocean. Um, you know, develops a, a nice, nice patina. Yeah. Um, I think you're going. Yep. Yeah, further ahead. <laughs> there we go. Um, you know, we we uh, keep going the to the light. A little further down, Andy. Yep. Keeping. Oh, lights. Okay. Yep. yep. So the. Um, yeah, the the uh, lamp post is um, the one in the lower right. Um, it would just be on a, a plain copper um, round post, um, and it actually, um, you know, light comes out of that little spot in the cap as well. Um, it's about twelve. The shade's about twelve inches across. We've used this um, post on a number of projects. Um, uh, around throughout New England. Um, and then the other lights are really um, more kind of garden lights. They're very low. Uh, the one on the top is actually for the back patio. Um, the one down below is, um, there's just a few of them on each side of the walk at the porch. And then the, the up light is, there's two of them um, to highlight the the bowl and the planting out front in the, the turnaround. So, so that's a 12, it's a one foot in diameter and then the and then the height, how, how tall would the lamppost be? The um, it's on the cut sheet if you keep going down. I believe it's a seven foot post. Um, if you keep going, uh, I think it's one of the last sheets. Okay. There, uh, no, nope, keep going. No, nope. yeah. Keep going. Wowee. I know. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, if you go to the next sheet, I think it's the post. Uh, next one. Keep going. <laughs> Gee whiz. <Sorry. laughs> there it Here is. Here you go. Uh, yeah. Seven foot. And that's also, that's a copper post. Yes. Yep. And uh, that's red copper and that will patina? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Could you, um, could you just hop to the, to the planter in the circular driveway, just that sure. material? Yeah. Working on it. <laughs> So um, like most garden ornament, it's um, a very fine cast stone. Um, so basically a fine concrete. Okay, so this is not a water feature, it will be a planter. Yes, it's a, a, just a planter, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Andrea, can we consider the uh, front yard perspectives that were emailed out to be part of the package? Sure. Because I think for me, uh, the my primary concern was that the any certificate we might issue uh, document how many, how many vertical elements there are. And I think the, the perspective drawings show uh, that there isn't anything other than the, the monumental pedestal as, as, a, as a significant vertical element. And uh, so that actually 
I'm very comfortable. I, I, I think it's an appropriate proposal. I do have share a little bit of concern over the copper lamp posts. The, I think the other lights are diminutive enough to be uh, uh, unconcerning. Uh, and actually, so those, those are my thoughts at the moment. Thanks, Justin. Catherine? Um, yeah, I have a couple of concerns. I, I wonder if we could go back to the topographical, top, topographical um, pillar. Item. I just am wondering at, um, if you're changing the grade at the top and I'm wondering at what point the grade will start to ch change from what it is now. Is there a, a location on the map that you can point to? Yeah, so um, we're to create, you know, a, a flatter area for the turnaround and to make it not visible from the street uh, we're raising the grade right when you pull into the turnaround and we're dropping the grade right in front of the porch, just very slightly um, so that it, it becomes more flat so that from down at the street, you really can't see it. Because if we were to build it on the slope, you would be able to see it from, from the street. So can you kind of point um, where... Um, where it stops being effect, where, where the- so where right the, where, yeah, right where you turn in. Um, here? Uh, right, right, right there, yeah, um, a little to the left. <laughs> it starts to, yeah, right there, it starts to go up a little bit, and then it meets existing grade halfway around the circle, and then we're dropping grade a little bit right in front of the porch, yeah. And then um, I do have some thoughts that the, the those lights are um, not typically what we have seen in Hingham. They're feeling a little craftsman to me, a little mm -hmm. contemporary maybe for the home. Um, and I w wonder, you have three of them, one at the base of the driveway. Yeah, one uh, right I where you turn into the turnaround and then one kind of um, almost uh, at the bottom of the page. Um, oh, kind of where the, the car park is? Yes, yeah. Okay, and then how many of the mushroom lights are you gonna have, just four of the just mushroom four. lights? four, yeah. And two on each side of the walk, yeah. How many spotlights? Um, just two, uh, one on each uh, kind of left and right of the, the urn. Okay. And then were there alternatives to the, the um, was there a shorter um, pedestal? Uh, for the lamppost? No, for the oh. um, lantern, was there a chance there was like a- Oh, for the, the base of the, what the bowl sits on? Yeah, the bowl base. There, there isn't, um, you know, the planting in there is, you know, like two feet tall, uh, the grasses and perennials. So you would only see uh, the top in the summer, you'd only see the top foot of the, the pedestal and then the 11 inch bowl, so. Thank you. And I think, you know, if the commission preferred a different light, I'm sure Jim and Amy would be happy to substitute that out. Yeah, if the um, if the typical wall, oh, excuse me, if the typical Walpole woodworker um, light that that predominates the neighborhood is preferred, we would most certainly uh, uh, go along with that. We happen to feel that the copper was kind of organic in nature and and you know in fitting with. Um, I mean, I, nature. I but, do but think, we'd be happy to change. It. I do think the Walpole um, post stands out a lot more. Um, but I do uh, understand the concern about, you know, the more contemporary top, so. Yeah, I would agree with Catherine's comment about its craftsman. Yeah, it's a little bit um, kind of clean craftsman. Right, that, that's my, for me, that's my only hesitancy. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy swap. Yeah. Um, Hans, looks like you wanted to speak. Oh yeah, my thanks. Um, so, uh, Jeff, are there um, are there any changes from the last um, the last meeting in terms of the uh, 
the plans? Are we, are, are, is there yeah. just a little more detail? Is that kind of what the? Yeah, so the plan has not changed at all. We added the previous plan in to kind of show the commission how it had changed over time. And then we, I threw in the landscape, the planting plan, just to show the intent of framing the house. Um, and then all the requested info of um, like cut sheets and um, the perspectives. Okay. Um, yeah, Mike, for me, um, I think I'm just, you know, what I said last time is still gonna be my, my position on this. Um, and just, uh, you know, for those that weren't on the meeting, on the Zoom call last time, uh, you know, if you go up and down Lincoln Street, we just don't have uh, circular driveways in front of houses. Um, this is something that would be very different and uh, I think more formal than, uh, than pretty much a, a, an informal street. Um, I'm concerned about the, uh, you know, you've provided a perspective from the end of the driveway. I think you're gonna be able to see this from other perspectives um, on the street. Um, and I also think that there's going to be a pretty substantial change in grading up near the house uh, in order to level that out. So something's going to, um, something's got to give here uh, in terms of that grading to, to make this more, more flat. So I think that, um, I, I think that's, um, you know, this, this flowing lawn up to the house, I think is going to be very different. Um, and I think, uh, I also think you're going to be able to you know, get the turnaround and what you would like to achieve by having, you know, three cars on the side there in terms of the parking. So I think that is very consistent with what you see on Lincoln Street. Um, if you go up and down the street, there's just these to the sides of the houses, there's that's where the parking spaces are or around back. So I, you know, I just, uh, in order to be consistent and what we're seeing on Lincoln Street right now, I would, you know, I would support this, but without the circular driveway in front. There is, just talking about the grade, there's about 14 feet from the street to where you turn into the um, turnaround. So, you know, it's just not possible to kind of see that paving from down at street level. And that 14 feet grade over that area does provide quite a bit of screening in terms of that yeah. uh, turnaround. So you're like saying 14 feet between the base of the driveway and the street level? Uh, from the where you turn into the turnaround down to the street, there's 14 feet of grade change. Ben? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Just a follow up. Um, Jeff, I don't know if there are my plans here. I'm, Small print for me. Um, I, I, th that urn is that roughly eighty feet, maybe from the street, seventy feet. Uh, let me see. I can kind of scale it. It's about one hundred and fifty feet. Okay, that does it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, Tracy. Any thoughts? <laughs> I, I wasn't in the first meeting. I mean, this it does change it quite a bit with um, being formal. Um, you know, the one thing the perspective doesn't show is any cars in the that would be out front or anything else. But again, you know, some of these items like the lamp post and the planter can, you know, really aren't impacting the the main structure itself. So. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more visible than um, the perspectives allude to, you know. So I I I hear Hans's concerns, <clears throat> um, but there's there's the exception of the front yard. There's there's not much being done to the. There's really no impact on the main house. Thanks, Tracy. Um, Robert, any any other thoughts? No, I think I I kind of like it the way it is. Um, it, uh, it doesn't show the cars as much. This new design, and I don't mind the driveway either. Okay, and I think you know I I hear the commission members' uh, concerns. You know, um, driving up and down Lincoln Street and familiar with the street. 
um, there really isn't a drive like this um, in proximity to uh, this house. And um, I, I think in this scenario though, and I envisioned as I was driving by and looking at other properties, if other properties near this would um, were to propose something like this, how it would affect the streetscape. And I think in other um, properties, I think it would be more impactful than I think this one is. And I think um, because of the way the grades go, because it's so set back from the street, um, I, I don't, I don't see a drastic change here. There's certainly modifications here. It certainly will be different. Um, but I, I look at it as sort of evolution, um, you know, to the property, um, that we see in other properties over time. So, um, those would be my, um, thoughts. I, I agree the the light fixtures, um, are not, um, appropriate. And I think you'll see in the photos that I think were submitted as exhibits regarding the driveway, um, those wall pole um, posts and more traditional light fixtures um, in most of those um, photos. So um, I think uh, providing alternate light fixtures, um, I think is something we need to do here. Um, I would also, um, you know, the urn is set back from the street. Um, you know, I think most of the lighting, the site lighting is pretty modest and far away, but I think, um, up lighting that urn, I think is probably going to add an extra layer of formality to this. Um, and, and I would encourage you to consider not up lighting the urn, um, and sort of keeping it a little more subdued, um, so those, those would be my thoughts. Um, I don't know if there are any other thoughts from um, any other commission members. Again, if I could respond to that, Mike, sorry, I, sure. I don't mean to be interrupting, but I just wanted to say that we would be, again, I repeat myself, we'll be happy to swap the lights out and we would be happy to delete those couple of lights up on the urn if that so pleases the commission. Okay, thank you. I do think the, the cobble edging on the, the driveway are going to make a great improvement to the whole um, street view. <clears throat> I think that's a nice touch. Okay. Are okay. there, um, Andrea, are there, are there typical bricks that we suggest um, for walkways? I thought it was um, a No, <clears throat> a lot of, uh, there's a lo lot of um, Boston City Hall paver that a lot of people use bus and city hall pavers. That's what's downtown. Um, and it's, you know, this looks, um, this looks appropriate to me. And plus, yeah, this I mean, it's, it's a, you know, a real clay, you know, paver made for paving. Um, sometimes people use building bricks as pavers and they don't hold up over time. So this is really meant to be um, driven on, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I agree with the uplading on the um, urn, but other than that, I'm. Okay. I, I would agree with that. And I, I'm hoping a motion might be made that might put the light choice for a subsequent step or something. Justin, would you like to make a motion? <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion there. Those, Roy, I, I'd like to make a motion for, gosh, what's the, the number 54? Uh, isn't it Lincoln Street? I see on the plans Lincoln Road. It's Lincoln, it's Lincoln Street. Lincoln right. Street. Uh, and the, the date I see on the package we received is a November date. I see a, a date of uh, November 30, 2020. Uh, would that be, match the what we're seeing on the screen? There's also right. a supplement uh, from the 4th of June. Okay, so uh, 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 so the proposal as depicted in the November 2020 plans with the, the June supplement and 
also including uh, a reference to the perspective drawings that have been submitted. Uh -huh. And I think we heard that the monumental pedestal number 955 would would not include the bronze uh, yes. plaque yep. that's depicted in the package. And uh, this motion does not approve the proposed lighting. And we would expect the lighting, uh, the different lighting to be subsequently submitted. Uh, Justin. Justin, I think, just to clarify, I think there was a discussion about removing the up lighting from the planter. So we can we'll, we can specify the that the planter yep. would not include up lighting and, and other good. light fixtures would be submitted at a later date. Okay, for like, the, um, for the, for the, for uh, the tall lighting. The, the tall, tall lighting, lighting, the lamp posts, I guess I would call them there. Okay. Yeah. So Justin, in, in, in your motion, you're approving the more diminutive lights? Uh, actually, no, I was uh, gonna request that others be proposed in a subsequent submission. Okay, so the locations are approved with the exception of the was, urn, and it's just really a fixture. It's a submittal. fixture. It's a fixture sub submittal is what my intent is with this motion. For the lampposts, is that correct? For the lampposts, and and I I heard some concern about the uh, the copper form. Uh, what do we call what are those footpath lights? Path lights. Hey. Did, did I mishear that? that the... I, I think there was just some discussion, but I'd, I'd be hard pressed to see, be able to actually see that from. Yeah. So this, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and suggest to have the motion in, approve the path lights, but expect that the uh, lamp post, what's the count on the lamp posts again? Is that three? Three. 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 So the three lamp posts be resubmitted with a, a another choice to be considered of lantern of lantern second okay um hans how do you vote no nope. uh catherine how do you vote aye justin how do you vote aye and i vote aye as well uh did i ask ben your vote aye your eye. Okay. All right. So uh, motion passes um, four to one. Uh, thanks for your time and the additional um, work that you put into the exhibits. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you to the commission. And we'll, we'll resubmit on those lights. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Well, so while we are complete with hearings um, for the evening, we do have um, several other business items to uh, address. And the first is um, review and approval of minutes. Um, and Andrea, I think some were submitted. That were yeah, submitted. we did. Um, they were submitted in a PDF format. So. I wasn't able to edit them. So I sent you the unedited minutes. And so from the 15th of May and the 27th. And so I I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get them soon enough to be able to deal with the format, but I, I will. So if you have comments on the content, I would appreciate that. Um, I can make um, any typos, I know, um justin your last name was wrong um so i can make Other than that, the, i thought the content of both sets of minutes looked accurate to me okay agreed yeah okay i'll jump in and, and make a motion to approve uh the minutes for May 27 and May 13. May 13 
uh, with some uh, formatting and typo modifications to be uh, made by Andrea. Second. Second. Second, second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Okay. Mr. And Chair, one other housekeeping detail is I, I sent, um, Tracy pulled together the, um, uh, the dates for the upcoming fiscal year, the meeting dates. And so um, I just need a vote on those. And, you know, as usual, um, she made sure that there aren't any national or holidays or religious holidays that are being impacted by our meeting dates. So what do you say for that? Do you say, I'd like to make a... Yeah, just move to accept the dates for... Accept the proposed dates for the, following, the upcoming year. Second. Somebody want to I'll second vote. that? Oh, second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. All right, and so um, the next and final item on the agenda um, is election of chair and vice chair. Um, and so as it is the end of the fiscal year, um, it's also when um, terms expire and new members are appointed and uh, when board sort of reorganize um, and, and reelect. So, um, with that, we do have two members um, whose terms are expiring, uh, and tonight uh, is their last meeting. Um, unfortunately, wow. those are uh, Ben and Hans, um, who will be departing. Um, and, you know, Ben has been a member of the commission for six years. I can't believe it. Um, you know, his incredible knowledge and experience um, as a builder has certainly been invaluable um, to the commission and to all of the properties um, in the district. And I think um, his passion for his craft shows in every project um, that's come before the commission um, and the way he's able to connect uh, with the applicants and um, educate us all uh, at the same time will certainly be missed. So um, can we make him not go? Yeah, we've already tried that. <laughs> we've tried it. <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I, I is, second the chairman's sentiments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has been a real honor. I mean, I, I have I've worked for some wonderful people, this immediate group, and then and then you know I, I think about Ronnie and Lois and Chuck and Marty and Thomas and John. Um just all wonderful people dedicated to the town of Hingham. And, I, and you know, that's that's unusual. We need more people dedicated, certainly. Um, and um, I was at, I thought it was very interesting, Hans. I don't know if you remember, my first meeting was with Jeff Taccio. And it's so interesting, he's in my last meeting. <laughs> but do you remember, we talked about 50% white Yes. Right, almost two hours. <laughs> and unfortunately, I remember everything. <laughs> I still have that packet behind me. If I if I took down the seal, you'll see this stack of paperwork that's probably, oh, I don't know, four and a half feet tall of all my all this stuff that's been submitted. And that one with Jeff Tachios is still here. <laughs> <laughs> that that was uh, really interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to ask what fifty percent white is, but maybe I won't. <laughs> yeah, we'll just pass on that. But it was just uh, uh, it was somebody who, um, you know, uh, applicant who wanted what she wanted, and unfortunately, we not unfortunately, but we had Marty Saunders on the board still at that time, who was she is an outstanding artist and her her color sense and her um, knowledge of period colors is second to none and so she um you know but they were flying in the face of you know the usual wisdom 
So it was a huge negotiation. <laughs> Took forever. Yeah, about two hours worth. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Ben. <laughs> I have nightmares tonight. Well, and then so Hans um, has been a member of the commission for even longer. Um, eight years, um, and I think was chair for six, um, maybe six of those years. Um, I think, and you know, Hans um, has always done an incredible job at leading the commission. Um, he's navigated lots of significant and also um, sometimes controversial projects, um, I'd say with grace and utmost professionalism. Um, you know, I think of Six Station Street um, as, as one of those. Um, he's a master consensus builder. Um, and I think instead of uh, being okay with rejecting a project, um, he's always done everything he could to find an appropriate solution. Um, he's worked tirelessly uh, to make sure we as a commission adhere to the guidelines that uh, we're here to uh, enforce. Um, and I think unlike other commissions, our guidelines tend to have gray areas um, and Hans always made sure uh, we stayed on track. And so your dedication to this commission and to the town of Hingham will certainly be missed. Absolutely. Um, really appreciate it, Mike. And um, I would just say that uh, it's been a privilege working with this group. It's been a privilege working with Andrea um, all these years. It's been a privilege working for the town, you know, and uh, I think if you just kind of go in and, and you put that at the top of the list behind all the reviews that you do while you're here, you're here to support the town and your people you work with on the commission and uh, everything will just kind of fall into place. So, you know, just kind of, you know, keep that in the back of your mind and and uh, uh, it's just been it's been terrific with with all you guys. So, I mean, it's just been a it's been a real honor. Um, just uh, all the support, and you know, it's like you, you come into every meeting, and you know, you're going to be working with some some great people, and uh, you're going to meet some some awesome people with applications in front of you, and you you can really you know figure out what's important and what's not. So. And this was uh, this was an important uh, um, commission, uh, and always will be. Um, so um, I'm not I'm not going anywhere. So you may see me very soon. So don't worry. <laughs> Hans, you're involved in like the master planning, correct? Is that's right? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's a extremely important role as well. And I've greatly, I haven't always agreed with, with some of your stances, but I've, I've always respected them. I think you've really held us to a, a very high standard in the, in the year and a half I've been here. So thank you. I appreciate that, Tracy. Well, it's certainly been um, a pleasure and a privilege to, to share with both you and Hans and, and Ben. Um, so um, you'll certainly be missed. Big time. <laughs> um, so, so to add um, to that, my term is also um, expiring. Um, and so, um, you know, after nine years, I've agreed to uh, stay on as an alternate member um, for at least a couple of more months um, <laughs> until um, you know, to sort of see the transition of, of leadership on the, on the commission go through and um, any ways I can help with that transition or onboard new members. Um, so um, I won't be leaving us tonight. I will be um, sticking around for a little bit. And so um, Tracy will be appointed as a voting member um, by the select board. Um, so effectively taking my place as a voting member. Um, and so that's likely to happen at um, whether it's the next upcoming selectman meeting at one of the, the near upcoming uh, meetings. And so that will likely be in place before our next um, uh, Historic Districts Commission um, meeting. So um, 
sort of with with kind of setting the table uh, with all of that, um, what I'd like to do is sort of go through the two different um, spots um, separately. So um, chair first and then vice chair. And so um, what I'll do is sort of start with um, nominations. Um, if anybody would like to nominate um, somebody or themselves for this position, um, we'll kind of start with that uh, for the chair. Um, so is there anybody who would like to nominate somebody uh, for the chair or somebody who would like to nominate themselves for the chair position? And nominate, oh, sorry, go ahead, Hans. So, so Mike, are, are outgoing commission members okay with making a, a recommendation? Um, yes, because um, we're all still on the commission um, and, and I think, you know, this is the time to uh, make those appointments while, um, while the commission is intact here. Okay. So with that, I would like to recommend Tracy uh, as chair, if he's, um, if he's willing to, to accept um, that recommendation. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ben, um, you were interested in making a recommendation? I was going to recommend Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and, and so uh, Carol's not here tonight, so we um, uh, spoke to Carol. Actually, she emailed me her, her thoughts, so I'd just like to kind of read that in um, here. And so um, her sort of her first choice um, for chair would have been uh, Justin. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, as far as I know, Justin um, is, is not interested in the chair position. I, I, it's, at this time in my life, I, I think I, I couldn't commit to that. Okay. You can't and, leave us though, Justin. No, I'm not. I'm not going to leave. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Hmm. Um, and so then her, uh, then she said her second choice would, would then be uh, Tracy. Um, so I would take that as a nomination um, or a recommendation from, from Carol to uh, for Tracy. So um, are there any other uh, recommendations? Can I second the recommendation? I'll, I'll recommend Tracy as well. Sure. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, congratulations, Tracy. Thank you. It was confusing with two Tracys on the meeting tonight. Though. Oh, that's right. That's we right. Have to we have come up with something there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I kept because thinking I was at work and had to like share my screen or something. Uh, no, I'm sorry. You weren't here when I introduced our new Tracy, um, who is uh, um, working for uh, helping me and also working for the planning board for um as an administrator there so she's um my new best friend i keep saying hi tracy hello sorry i want to apologize for shutting my video off it, my computer told me i had sketchy internet access so i turned my video off i figured no me is better than no meeting <laughs> okay that's great thank you tracy you're welcome um and so then the uh the next um uh, spot would be the vice chair um, are there any recommendations uh, for the vice chair position? I'd like to recommend Justin. Will he take that vice position? <laughs> Justin, where are I don't you? feel pressured. <laughs> I'm feeling pressure. I, I, I think I have to decline again. I'm sorry. Understood. But thank you. We love Justin. Very kind of you. Hans? Um, I would like to uh, nominate Catherine. <laughs> um, does that vice position necessarily 
turn into the chairperson position? It could. It, it has it in the past. It, <laughs> it has. It did. Yeah. Right. It did, didn't it? It did. As right. a, I don't really know what the vice person does, but this, I just, I'm totally un, not prepared for this conversation. When, when Tracy calls in sick. Oh, yeah. you have to run the meeting. You oh, stand at the ready Lord. is what you do, Catherine. Lord, oh, Lord, I have done. This is my first ever commission. I don't feel prepared for that at all. Well, I would need and, serious tutoring. <laughs> and I would, I would also what so to finish uh, the other part of Carol's um, <laughs> um, message was um, she said, if asked, I would be honored to serve as vice chair. Well, I very much support that. I support that too. <laughs> Are you turning down the nomination, Catherine? I think I am. I feel very flattered, but I, I feel like I need much more. Um, you know, I've only been really a Zoomer. I have very little. <laughs> That's so true. next time, maybe. And That's I really true. feel I need a little bit more um, oven time before I'm ready to be taken out of the oven, definitely. <laughs> I think you're ready, Catherine. I think so too. <laughs> thank you. But that's everybody. okay. It's your call. It's your call. I feel very flattered, and I thank you for your um, your vote of um, you know confidence. But I think Carol will do a lovely job if she okay. if ever others feel that way. So um, so as she's sort of as Carol has, I would take that as nominating herself. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, are all all the all those in favor of Carol um, Piles for uh, vice chair? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Robert, we didn't hear from you. Am I allowed to vote on this? Yeah, of course yeah. you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I I'd be very much in favor of Carol. Okay. Great. All right, wow. it looks like we have our new chair and vice chair, Chair Tracy and Vice Chair Carol. Thank you. Good team. Thank you, everyone. Uh, kind of sad. We're sad. I'm very That's sad. You've been great um, teachers. I've learned so much. And um, with your leadership, I've just, I feel like I've, I've learned so much. It's been a great experience yeah. working with all of you. I'm, I'm going to miss every one of you. Right, you both had a really positive right. impact on the town. Andrew, I think the bar has been set for finding replacements. Yes, I think so too. Um, I'm working on it. <laughs> and and they, I, I have, we, have you already reached out to the AIA? Not yet, but I will. Um, okay. Yes, and there, there are also a couple of um, architects in town. I was going to try and twist somebody's arm, but we'll see they, who are AIA members. So but we'll see if they're interested. And how about builders, are we? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, nobody can replace them. No. They're also all too damn busy. Yeah, they're all <laughs> too damn busy. And um, the, I could probably count on, on, well, that's what I keep telling people. I can count on one hand the general contractors that I would trust to you know, work on an historic home. But Ben has spoiled us. I know. Well, and John D'Angelo before him, you saw John at the last meeting. And, and then, Ben Wilcox. And Ben Wilcox. He was on the board for a while. And um, Peter Bickford will never leave the Board of Health. <laughs> uh, so that's got too much I power. The first time I met Ben Wilcox, and I kind of stopped looking at the detail we were looking at we were on a site visit and i was just like this is this is a, a you know a, a, a treasure that is just never going to re be replaced i you couldn't know? agree with you more uh, it's a it's a craftsmanship that's just unfortunately you know phasing out more and more rare uh, yeah. yeah a real asset to hingham then there's uh, the, the other person is uh, in, um, he, he doesn't live in Hingham. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so that 
that sort of screws that up. But anyway, I'm working on it. <laughs> and I think I, when I, I spoke to Bill Ramsey yesterday, it sounded like they were, they've been interviewing um, candidates. So um, hopefully we'll have some new folks on board soon. So are we, is Hans and Ben are just gone and we have to make do without their expertise at this point? I mean, uh, if you so don't get to like have a little leave. period or something. Yes, that's true. So we, we now have you and Carol and Justin and Mike and Tracy. Well, well, Catherine, Robert. Catherine, Robert. Catherine Robert. that's why they invented the word. That's why they invented the word consultants. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ben? <laughs> I still call Ben Wilcox with questions, and so I will call you too. <laughs> so, is the next meeting in in the at the town hall, Andrea? Well, um, I. Until the legislature um, votes to, because the state of emergency ends on Monday. And um, so it was earlier than planned. Apparently it was supposed to end in August sometime. So actually next week, because the legislature hasn't voted to allow um, remote meetings to continue, we, I have a meeting on Wednesday night that has to be held in town hall. So. But, but we might be going back to Zoom. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, we just have to wait and see what we're told. <laughs> it's certainly convenient. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a discussion of a kind of a hybrid, you know, and you know that there's been some times when an architect has been able to share their screen and do some real time modifications that have yep. been so helpful. Agreed. Yeah. So we'll just have to see what what comes. Change is hard. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. All well. Right. I guess, good night, everybody. I don't want to make an end. I don't want to make a motion no. to adjourn. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Motion for everything. tonight. Andrea, thank you. Ben, no, thank you. No, thank yeah, you all. Thank you, Andrea, thank you. thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening. Uh, Tracy, Tracy, thank you very much for your all your uh, hosting tonight and everything else. And um, so that's You're very it. welcome. Thank you, very welcome. I look, as I said earlier, I look forward to working with all of you, you. except for the ones that are leaving. Unfortunately, <laughs> we get to work together too much. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.